Hi, Minister Gibble. Welcome to your new role. We were so happy to hear your recent statements at COP26, where you spoke so clearly about protecting the rights of Indigenous people. So we were shocked when one of your first acts as minister was to sign off on the draft terms of reference for the regional assessment of the Ring of Fire. Supporting these terms of reference goes against everything you say you believe in. These terms cut the region's Indigenous peoples out of decision-making roles on their own lands. We're concerned that you may not have been briefed fully and properly about the Ring of Fire, so let us help you. We are all treaty peoples, and that comes with both rights and responsibilities. You say you want to be part of that, to stand for treaty rights and obligations, and for our common climate future. And the first step is to listen. Politicians before you have chosen to ignore the diverse and important perspectives in the Indigenous grassroots of Treaty 9, as well as allies across the country who are saying that there's a lot to be worried about when it comes to the Ring of Fire. So let's try to fix that. Allow us to provide you with the Treaty People's Briefing on what's been going on with the Ring of Fire before you got here. This video is just one part of a series of diverse voices on this issue. Keep an eye out for more as we share them. You've probably heard that critical minerals are essential in a just transition to a green economy, but there's more to the story. My name is Jamie Neen. I work with Mining Watch Canada based in Ottawa, Ontario in unceded Anishinaabe Algonquin territory. I've been working on mining and social justice issues for several decades now. A green economy isn't one that's just built around critical minerals. A green economy is one that isn't just a low carbon version of our existing extractivist, capitalist, growth based economy. Continuing to extract more and more of the planet's non renewable resources, but just substituting fossil fuels with metals and plastics, is not green and it's not a just transition. We need to be focusing on restructuring our entire economy to provide for people's needs, not profits for corporate executives and shareholders. From a perspective of justice, the world's wealthy cannot go around demanding that the people who have contributed the least to the climate crisis, who are already suffering the most from its effects, and who are already the subject of colonial dispossession, be the ones to make even more sacrifices. In this case, the massive peatlands of the James Bay Lowlands are one of the planet's greatest carbon sinks, and the peatlands, and the First Nations whose lives and livelihoods are bound up with them, are already feeling the effects of climate instability. We are in the midst of compound crises. Climate, biodiversity, contamination, and inequality. They are all closely related. We can't solve one by making the others worse, but we can take action on all of them together. There are so many things to consider in making a huge decision like this. Let's start fresh in a better way. Please act now to stop the current regional assessment and instead allow Indigenous peoples to lead a process to determine the future of their homelands. In your own words, Indigenous peoples have been stewards of this planet since time immemorial. The fight against climate change is not possible without their knowledge and leadership. Any agreement on a path forward must protect the rights of Indigenous peoples, full stop. You said that. We want to take you at your word, Minister Gibo. Do the right thing.